What if I told you that researchers at MIT have created a new kind of fuel cell with 200 times the capacity and just a third of the weight of lithium-based batteries? Also, it doesn't use lithium, cobalt, or rare earth metals at all, but is instead powered by salt? Sounds impossible, right? For decades, batteries have relied on heavy, expensive, and increasingly unsustainable materials. But now, a team at MIT has developed a working sodium fuel cell that could flip that idea on its head. This device is powered by liquid sodium metal, yes, the same element found in table salt, and the air around us. And the most surprising part? It could carry more than three times the energy of the best lithium-ion batteries today. This isn't a sci-fi concept locked away in a lab. It's real and it works. And it could finally unlock a future of electric aviation, zero emission ships, and long-range electric trucks, all without the environmental cost of lithium. In this video, we'll break down the revolutionary science behind this salt-powered fuel cell, what makes it different, how it could change aviation and energy forever, and the real technical hurdles it still faces. Stick around, because what you're about to learn might just be the spark behind the next energy revolution. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe, so you don't miss the future when it arrives. Batteries are everywhere, powering your phone, your car, and increasingly your home. But the truth is, they're reaching their physical limits. Lithium-ion batteries max out at around 300 watt-hours per kilogram. That's just not enough for energy-hungry applications like airplanes, long-haul trucks, or cargo ships. The weight becomes a bottleneck, and lithium itself is becoming harder to mine, more expensive to source, and riskier to scale sustainably. If we want real electric aviation, not just drones or short-range planes, but real passenger jets, we need energy densities above 1,000 watt-hours per kilogram. That's more than triple what current batteries offer. MIT's answer to this challenge isn't just another battery. It's a sodium air fuel cell. This system works more like a generator than a battery. Instead of storing all its energy internally, it takes in liquid sodium as fuel and uses oxygen from the air to generate electricity on demand. At its core is a solid ceramic membrane that allows sodium ions to pass through while keeping everything else stable. On one side of the cell, liquid sodium metal. On the other side, ordinary air. In between, a high-performance ceramic electrolyte and a porous air-facing electrode manage the controlled reaction. This combination lets the system operate safely at high temperatures and enables extremely high energy density. Over 1,500 watt-hours per kilogram at the stack level, which translates to about 1,000 watt-hours system-wide. That crosses the threshold needed for regional electric aviation, finally making electric planes more than a dream. For years, electric flight has been held back by the weight of batteries. Even the most advanced lithium packs don't come close to what's needed for meaningful flight range. But this new sodium fuel cell could change that. With this energy density, we're talking about real electric planes, capable of flying regional routes that make up 80% of domestic flights and account for around 30% of aviation emissions. Think short-haul routes like Boston to New York or London to Paris, all without jet fuel, without CO2 emissions, and without waiting hours to recharge. What's more, this system doesn't need to be recharged. You simply swap out the sodium cartridges, refill them, and go, much like how we refuel planes today. It's fast, modular, and scalable. And here's the twist. As the fuel is consumed, it reacts with oxygen and creates sodium oxide, which spontaneously absorbs CO2 from the atmosphere. The byproduct becomes sodium hydroxide, which turns into baking soda. Yes, actual baking soda. And it could even help deacidify the oceans if it ends up there. Let's break down the mechanism. The fuel cell is composed of stacks of ceramic plates. On one side, liquid sodium is pumped in. On the other, air flows through. 
The sodium releases electrons as it reacts with oxygen, producing electricity. Meanwhile, sodium ions migrate through the solid ceramic membrane to complete the reaction. This setup prevents dangerous short circuits, avoids volatile liquid electrolytes, and separates fuel from oxidizer, which makes the system inherently safer than lithium batteries. MIT's team tested two versions, one vertical H-cell design using glass tubes and another horizontal stack that looks like a cafeteria tray. Both showed promising performance. The key innovation? Humidity. By controlling moisture in the air, the team discovered that the sodium discharge products could remain in liquid form, allowing them to be flushed out easily. That small change made a big performance leap possible. Electric aviation is just the beginning. This fuel cell could also unlock cleaner transportation across marine and rail industries, sectors that also suffer from weight and range constraints. Imagine cargo ships powered by sodium fuel cells instead of diesel, or high-speed trains running long distances without massive battery packs. Even agriculture could benefit. MIT's team plans to test a drone-sized version delivering 1,000 watt-hours from a single brick-sized unit. That's more than enough to power large drones for field spraying, surveying, or delivery. And for all these use cases, refueling is easy. Sodium melts at just 98 degrees, so a sealed cartridge can be safely heated, swapped, and reused. It's a familiar model, just like gas or jet fuel, but cleaner, safer, and recyclable. Of course, this isn't ready to replace lithium tomorrow. Sodium metal is highly reactive and must be carefully sealed to prevent exposure to air or moisture. Though the fuel cell design is inherently safer than lithium batteries in terms of short-circuiting or overheating, careful handling and materials engineering will be critical for safety certification, especially in aviation. And while the prototype works in the lab, it still needs to be scaled. Manufacturing solid-state ceramic membranes at high quality and volume will take time. But the researchers are optimistic. They've even launched a company, Propel Aero, to commercialize the tech, and it's already backed by major energy investors. So what does all of this mean? This new sodium fuel cell represents something we don't see very often. A real leap in energy density, sustainability, and safety, all at once. It's a clean, refillable system using widely available materials. It could replace lithium in some of the hardest to electrify sectors, flight, freight, and long-haul transport. It's fast to refuel, it emits no carbon, and its waste products could actually capture CO2 and help deacidify oceans. It sounds too good to be true, but the early lab data, prototypes, and investment suggest it's very real. The only question now is, can we scale it fast enough? Let us know in the comments what you think. Could this be the battery killer or just another overhyped lab demo? If you enjoyed this breakdown, hit like, subscribe, and share it with someone still stuck on lithium. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the electric future. I'd love to hear your take. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.